In this lecture, we're going to talk about using a wire doubler. You may have never seen one. They may not be common in your market, but they can be very confusing if they're installed on a system and you don't know it's there or it isn't marked. There are two different versions on the market, one from Transitional Systems and another one from a company called Arco, but they really work the same way. What it is, is these are designed to run two or more valves from a single set of wires. And when I mean a single set of wires, I mean a hot wire and a common. So the basic unit of a doubler is going to have three wires coming out of it. It's going to have two wires going in, the hot wire and the common. And then coming out of it, the output is going to be a common and two hot wires, and there are versions that have three and four hot wires so you can control multiple valves out in the field. But let's just talk about the one that doubles it. So we've got two wires in, three wires out, a common, and two hot wires. What our application is, is for adding a zone out in the field. Maybe it's a long way away from the timer. Now, if you're on a residential property, running a new set of wires 30 or 40 feet, that's no big deal if you're adding a zone on to an existing system. But let's say you're on a commercial property and you're a long way away from the timer and it may be nearly impossible to get another set of wires up underneath a street or back to the timer. In fact, if you've ever dealt with pulling permits for doing a bore underneath a street, it's not worth it. At least in South Carolina, it's not. It takes a whole lot of doing to get up underneath that you have to have the utility people there spotting you because normally underneath the streets you're going to have all kinds of gas, electrical, television, phone wires. So it's a little bit of a tricky deal. So if it's up to me and I'm working, say, on a uh, an entrance for a subdivision and they need a zone put on way down at the end, I'm going to use a wire doubler. Also, some other applications for this might also be if you need to split a zone in two. Let's say that a contractor has installed a zone that's too big or actually the zone covers two different microclimates and it'd be best to split this in two. A doubler works good in those situations. Or you can even find yourself on one of these larger properties with a bad hot wire. Maybe it's been chewed on somewhere and you just can't find the break and, and you're having trouble tracking down the problem or finding out actually where the bad spot in that wire is. I mean, there are some things out there that can help us find those problems, but let's say that you can't, and I've seen situations like this to where there's a pinch in the wire up underneath the street, or it's with a bundle of wires that no matter what you do, you just can't track it down. And I hate to say that, you know, we give up and punt in those situations, but sometimes just out of expediency and, you know, um, affordability for a repair for a client, it might be time to think about installing a doubler. Now here's what we do is we're going to install the actual device out in the field near the valves or probably inside the same housing that we have our valve in, whether it's a valve pit, a small round one, or a larger rectangular one. But it's always good practice if you're installing any external equipment that isn't readily visible then you're going to want to put some kind of note at the timer alerting yourself when you come back or another contractor that works on the system that there's a doubler out in the field and that there's multiple valves being run by these set of wires. So what happens is you wire this up and when you get out into the field you run your hot wire and your common to your new valve and then when you go back to the timer you're going to put a wire jumper between the two zones that we're concerning here. The first zone that we're tapping off of for the wires out in the field and then the new zone, let's say that that's a new zone number eight and the old one is zone number seven, then we're going to want to put a small wire jumper between the two terminals inside the timer. So what happens in the doubler, it's basically just a switch inside the housing that changes position after each use. So let's say we're going through the normal program, it runs zone 7. When it shuts zone 7 off, the little switch inside the doubler clicks, and then when it fires up and it goes to run zone 8, because we've got the switch in there, it sends the signal back through the same set of wires, and now we're running the second valve on that set of wires and not the first one. So it's just a switch that switches back and forth. And if we didn't have this jumper wire in there, then 
each day that you ran it would be the time that it would switch. And then you wouldn't have your additional zone running every time the rest of the system was running. It would be only running every other time. Now that's only if we didn't put the wire jumper in there.